pressing question in this era of abundant knowledge and scarcity of truth is how can we identify the true Imam Mahdi? When will he arrive? And who is this remarkable individual? What circumstances will surround his arrival? And how can we discern his identity? So let's dive right into the timeline of Imam Mahdi as understood in hadiths and by the opinions of notable scholars and ulamas. The period preceding the arrival of Imam Mahdi will be marked by tribulation, oppression and tyranny for the Muslim Ummah. The winds of injustice will sweep across the lands, while the flames of warfare and persecution tear through the pillars upholding Islam in this world. Amidst this tumultuous era, an epic conflict shall unfurl, known as the event of Malhamatul Kubra or Malhama Al Kubra. Within the folds of this immense war lies a crucial moment where Constantinople, known today as Turkey, shall slip from the grasp of the Muslim world. Furthermore, the once venerable city of Yathrib or Medina shall be reduced to ruins implying that potential devastation that may befall the entirety of Saudi Arabia. As the Muslim Ummah languishes in a state of ruin and chaos, with the Middle East serving as the battleground for this colossal conflict, a figure of great significance shall emerge from the depths. The absurgence of Imam Mahdi will be occurring in a place to the direction of Khurasan, although the precise details of his birthplace and lineage remain absent from the Hadiths. There are prophecies that illuminate Mahdi's character, ancestry, physical attributes and the location of his appearance. Imam Mahdi shall arise from the noble lineage of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, descending from the noble progeny of Fatima Interestingly, this enigmatic figure will initially bear the qualities of an ordinary Muslim, devoid of remarkable piety or religious devotion that one would expect. However, in a single transformative night, Allah shall bestow upon him enlightenment, knowledge and unparalleled abilities forever altering the course of his destiny. Physically, Imam Mahdi shall possess a broad forehead and a distinctive aquiline nose reminiscent of the noble features. His very name shall bear a resemblance to that of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, further underscoring his profound connection to the Islamic legacy. Imam Mahdi's remarkable journey unfolds in two distinct stages. His initial appearance or emergence, followed by his final acceptance or bait. As the Mahdi emerges onto the world stage, he shall garner a devoted following from the east, with his presence emanating from the direction of Khurasan. This intriguing revelation hints at the anticipation surrounding the Mahdi, that something will be known about his identity before people begin to recognize his profound significance. During this time, drawing closer to his acceptance, the Mahdi shall find support or be accompanied by a group of individuals bearing black flags or black banners. The symbolism behind these black emblems runs deep, signifying not only a display of military might but also instilling fear in those who oppose Islam. It is worth noting that the presence of the Mahdi amidst these black banners heralds a formidable force, one that will leave an undeniable mark on history. According to certain hadiths, the army rallying under the black banners shall unleash a destruction unparalleled in human history, surpassing any previous displays of might or prowess. This further solidifies our understanding of their awe-inspiring might shrouded in mystery and unrivaled strength. In the midst of this tumultuous era in the Middle East where Constantinople would have been lost and Yathrib or Medina will lie in ruins, a grippling conflict will unfold among the three sons of a king. This protracted battle remains unresolved, further exacerbating that already troubled state of affairs. Meanwhile, this enigmatic figure of the Mahdi finds himself in the city of Medina during this time seeking refuge from the mounting pressure to assume leadership of the Muslim Ummah. Sensing the urgency of this situation, he embarks on a journey to Makkah, hoping to evade the persistent entreaties of the people. As fate would have it, the Mahdi's arrival at the sacred precincts of the Kaaba in Makkah would not go unnoticed. Certain individuals astute to his presence, to his identity, 
to his accomplishments identify him amidst this hallowed sanctuary, compelling him to accept their allegiance known as Bayt. In this pivotal moment, news of the Mahdi's acceptance will reverberate across the globe, heralding a new era of hope and transformation. Yet amidst this rising tide of his support, an opposition emerges from Syria daring to challenge the newly anointed Mahdi. Undeterred by the opposition, the Mahdi and his steadfast companions find themselves faced with adversaries who seek to undermine their mission. However, as events unfold, a remarkable intervention will take place. With divine intervention, Allah will command the earth to swallow the belligerent forces of Syria, symbolizing their defeat and solidifying the triumph of the Mahdi and his loyal followers. In the realm of Mahdi's prophesied arrival, a vision of prosperity and serenity emerges where truth reigns supreme and the authentic teachings of Allah's religion, the Khilafah based on prophethood will be restored. The arduous struggle known as the Great War or the epic Malhama Al-Kubra at this point in time, which would have plagued humanity, will eventually draw to a close paving the way for Mahdi and his dedicated followers to establish the tenets of Islam across the globe. Some hadiths hint at a formidable opposition that Mahdi's armies will confront at this time, a staggering 80 flags symbolizing a potential coalition of nations in conflict with his mission. Yet it is through the boundless mercy of Allah that Mahdi and his valiant forces will be granted triumph reclaiming territories like Turkey and Jerusalem. Intriguingly, historical accounts note that amid the tumult of war, a contingent of Christians will forge a truce with Mahdi's army, transcending religious boundaries to fight a common enemy. However, in the midst of this great war, a rift will fracture in the unity between Christians and Muslims, giving rise to a destructive internal dispute that transforms into a full-fledged war, exacting a heavy toll on human lives. Nevertheless, amidst this turmoil, it is the unwavering faith of the true believers that will persevere, ultimately Mahdi and his army emerging victorious over tribulation. In the era governed by Mahdi, a time of unparalleled prosperity and equity shall dawn upon humanity. Allah's boundless blessings will overflow, eradicating poverty and ushering in a new era of abundant resources. Mahdi, bestowed with divine providence, shall be entrusted with the plentiful bounties of sustenance and favor, which he will graciously distribute to the farthest corners of the world, and hence he will be known as the distributor. This golden age of Mahdi's governance will endure for a span of seven, eight or nine years, serving as a prelude to the imminent arrival of a figure shrouded in darkness, the Jal or the Antichrist. This ominous entity, whose advent has been forewarned by the prophets of Allah, shall instigate a time of tribulation and trial for the believers. Emerging from the lands of Khorasan, the Jal or the Antichrist shall amass a following from the city of Isfahan in Iran. His nefarious influence shall extend far and wide as he traverses the globe, infiltrating every city in his path. None shall be spared from the turmoil wrought by presence of the Jal or Antichrist, save for a few sanctuaries which his corrupting influence shall be barred from. In the midst of this chaotic era, certain sacred locations will remain safeguarded, shielded by celestial guardians. The holy cities of Medina and Makkah will be enveloped in the protective embrace of angels, impervious to the Dajjal's reach. Likewise, the ground of Sinai Mosque and the revered Masjid Al-Aqsa shall serve as sanctuaries as well, beyond the clutches of the Dajjal's malevolence. Within the vast corpus of Islamic traditions, the presence of Imam al-Mahdi during the era of the Dajjal remains a subject of divergence between Sunni and Shia hadiths. While Sunni sources do not explicitly mention the involvement of Imam Mahdi in this period, 
Shia traditions recognize his pivotal role, depicting him as a leader who valiantly confronts the Jal or the Antichrist in battle. It is important to note that the absence of specific Sunni hadiths does not definitively negate the presence of Imam Mahdi during this time. However, given the natural progression and evolution of hadith narratives, it is reasonable to speculate that Imam al-Mahdi could indeed be present, as the lack of such explicit references should not be regarded as a conclusive denial of his involvement. This notion gains further support when we consider the reliable hadith that speak of the arrival of Isa Islam or Jesus and the concurrent presence of Imam al-Mahdi with the latter leading the prayer ahead of Isa Islam. This hadith offers compelling evidence that Imam al-Mahdi will in fact be an active participant during the epoch of the Jal or Antichrist emergence. Moreover, a captivating hadith sheds light on the temporal framework of the Dajjal's reign amongst humankind. It stipulates a duration of 40 days, with the initial day equating to a year, the second day to a month, the third day to a week, and the remaining 37 days following the normal cycle of a day. Meanwhile, as the Mahdi assumes the mantle of Imam and Khalifa, leading the Muslim Ummah and believers and making preparations to confront the forces of the Dajjal or Antichrist, Isa Islam or Jesus will descend to the earth. His arrival will be near the white minaret in the eastern vicinity of Damascus, shortly before the break of dawn. Imam Mahdi at the time, along with others, will beseech Isa Islam to lead them in prayer. But Isa Islam will humbly decline affirming that the Imam should rightfully assume this role as a divine grace from Allah. In fact, Isa al-Islam's mission upon his return is not that of a new prophet, but rather that of a faithful follower of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, adhering to the sacred Sharia that Prophet wasallam brought. Thus, he will readily defer to the authority of the Khilafah of the era, that is the Mahdi. As dawn breaks, signaling the arrival of a new day, Muslims on that day will gather to perform the Fajr prayer with Isa al-Islam before embarking on their final confrontation with the Dajjal and his formidable armies. In a remarkable testament to the divine power bestowed upon Isa al-Islam or Jesus, the very breath exhaled by him will carry a fragrance that proves fatal to any disbeliever within its reach. Its alluring scent will permeate the air, stretching across the expansive horizon as far as the eye can behold. The ensuing battle will unleash an intensity that forces the army of the Jal to scatter and seek refuge in the shadows. With this climatic showdown drawing to a close, the pursuit of the Jal or Antichrist will commence at this point, ultimately culminating in his encounter and demise. Immediately following this, or while this epochal event is drawing to a close, Yajuj Majuj or Gog and Magog, formidable beings driven by rage and animosity towards humanity, will be unleashed upon the world. The Hadiths weave a narrative depicting Yajuj and Majuj or Gog and Magog as possessing extraordinary strength, unmatched abilities and imposing stature. While the exact number of casualties resulting from the onslaught of these beings remains unmentioned in the traditions, we can glean insights from the hadiths that shed light on the magnitude of Yajuj Majuj's presence. According to one such hadith, the initial among the Yajuj Majuj will pass by Lake Tiberias and consume its entire contents, while the last of them will traverse the same path expressing astonishment at the absence of water. Drawing upon our current understanding of Lake Tiberias, which holds a staggering 4 trillion liters of water, we can hypothesize that in an exaggerated estimate, Yajuj Majuj 1 may consume 100 liters of water, and this would yield approximately 40 billion Yajuj Majuj. This estimation invites a sobering realization it is conceivable that nearly 99% of humanity may succumb to the devastating might of Yajuj, Majuj or Gog and Magog. 
In the aftermath of the encounter with Yajuj Majuj or Gog and Magog, the loyal companions of Mahdi and Isa al-Islam will seek refuge in a protective shelter, awaiting the eradication of these formidable adversaries from the face of earth. According to the Hadith, Isa al-Islam will supplicate to Allah beseeching divine intervention, whereupon Allah will dispatch tiny insects that will swiftly bring about the demise of Yajuj and Majuj. Emerging from their sanctuary, Isa al-Islam and his companions will find themselves encircled by the lifeless bodies of these fallen foes. The state of Isa al-Islam at this point and his companions during their protracted stay in the shelter will be marked by remarkable conditions. Such will be the circumstance that a single pomegranate will suffice to nourish all. This detail offers a glimpse into the prolonged duration spent within the confines of this shelter with limited provisions and resources. Their survival during this time will hinge solely upon the unwavering faith in Allah and an unimaginable reservoir of patience. Upon the eradication of Yajuj Majuj, the subsequent narratives solely pertain to the life of Isa al-Islam and the collective departure of the believers from this world. The Hadith do not provide a definitive account of the precise length of time Isa al-Islam will remain on earth, with some traditions suggesting up to the age of 40, approximately 7 to 8 years, and others indicating a span of 40 years. Following Isa al-Islam's eventual departure, the remaining believers will likewise depart from this mortal realm. While they continue to dwell, a divine gust of wind will sweep across the land, extracting the souls of all faithful believers, while those who have embraced wickedness will be left behind. It was narrated by Anas that Prophet Muhammad said, The hour will not begin until there is no one left on earth who says, Allah, Allah. And henceforth, the day of judgment will be established and the hour will begin. The hour of accounting of all humanity and the ultimate judgment of those who will abide in heaven and those who will perish in hellfire.